Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. Alrighty, let's get into the drive. Hello and welcome! Today we're driving a 2021 BMW M440i. This is a rear-wheel drive model. I would like to thank Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to both review and test drive this BMW. I just did an in-depth uh, review with this BMW, so check it out, currently out on the channel, and we will get out on the road in just a moment after a few quick specs. So this is a two-row coupe. This is a convertible with seating for four. It has a curb weight of 39.77 pounds and a gross weight of 49.49 pounds. This is powered by the same drivetrain as the Toyota Supra, a 3.0-liter turbo i6 with a mild hybrid electric system. Uh, 382 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque are pumped out of this. The Supra doesn't have the mild hybrid, to my knowledge, but it is a very similar engine. This is mated with an 8-speed shiftable auto and can reach 0-60 to 60 in about 4.5 seconds. <laughs> It has a 158 mile per hour top speed. For MPG, you get 22, 31, and 25 combined. For wheels, you get 19 inch alloy wheels with 225 tires and some very nice M brakes. You get blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure alert with lane keep assist, and corner swiveling headlights in here. You ride on four wheel independent suspension, get a center LSD or limited slip differential, and you get active exhaust in here. You also get active grille shutters up front, which control the uh, the air intake and cooling of the engine. Alrighty, that's going to about do it for the quick run through, and let's get this out on the road. You do get an automatic seatbelt tensioner and a seatbelt uh, giver right there, whatever you would call that, a receiver. Alrighty, so we are in, uh, let's start just out in uh, Eco Pro mode, because this is, uh, let's actually start in Comfort mode. That's a more standard mode. So this is what uh, a more standard type of drive would be in here. I'm going to drive with the uh, the roof up just because um, it is cold. It is about 37, 40 degrees in here outside. So I am not in the mood to uh, get absolutely destroyed by the freezing weather. And I want the sound to be better for this video. As you heard in the startup, the exhaust sounds pretty good. It has a pretty deep sound. There is a little bit of audio pumped in, so it's not 100% pure engine noise, but it is pretty loud. So we're in comfort mode. You do have auto stop start technology currently enabled in here. So if I come to a stop, it will turn itself off. But if you drive in sport mode or sport plus mode, it will turn that, um, it will disable the start stop feature. So this is rear wheel drive again. So there's auto stop start. There's 50 already with pretty, uh, pretty light input, and I'm in uh, comfort mode, so I'm in standard normal mode, so that's pretty cool. You do get shift paddles in here, very large shift paddles, actually. Right there. Pretty quick replies. Nothing too bad. You can go back in and add manual over there on the shifter. And you do get a head-up display in here, which is really nice. It's very quiet in here. Surprisingly quiet, uh, riding on 19-inch wheels. For your steering feel, it's pretty good, actually. It's uh, it's definitely nowhere close to numb. It's pretty hard and aggressive, but it's not uh, it's not overbearing. But then if I pop into sport mode, it does stiffen up just a little bit. The brakes are very good in here, of course. They feel amazing. Very manageable, though. Not, like, too touchy of a brake pedal. Moderately touchy, but nothing horrible. And going through bumps, it rides stiff, but it doesn't throw you around. It's a pretty good ride, actually, staying relatively composed through uh, through bumps like that. And in just a moment, we will do a 0-60 to 60 in sport mode. We'll leave traction on because it's very cold. I uh, don't know how well I'm going to hook. The tires are probably going to spin, but um, that's just because it's cold. Yeah, let's come to a stop here and do a 0-60. to 60. I will stomp it just in sport. Wow, okay, that's 60. So, of course, I spun a little bit with the tires in the beginning, but wow. That thing is a very linear power band. It just keeps pulling you. That pulls hard, wow. 
I didn't expect it to pull that hard. And I could hear like a little bit of like a tweeting type of noise, which was a mild hybrid electric system uh, popping back in as well. That sounds very good and it really pulls hard, but it stays very well composed uh, in the steering. I didn't feel like I was gonna lose it or anything. And uh, wow, <laughs> that thing pulls so hard though. Wow. Going into a corner there, nothing but uh, tight. Feels perfect, not like I'm gonna lose any kind of traction. So that's always great. But yeah, driving it even in sport mode here, it's not too crazy. It stays pretty low in the RPMs. And then it does have lane departure warning with lane keep assist. It just intervened there. The, the wheel vibrated and tried to drag me back in. There is no lane here, but it's just, uh, it is actively reading, which is good. And you got a lot of M badging in here. Some of it is uh, gonna be aftermarket, just a couple of M badges from uh, the previous owner here. This has about 6,000 miles, but it is uh, very good. Very nice high quality backup camera, which is nice. That's kind of rare these days. A lot are just so cheap, but this is great. Got to step out a little bit there, but it stays very well composed. This really uh, doesn't feel like you're gonna lose it. Uh, I drove a 2018 M4 a while ago, the previous gen, uh, with you know the more the old style uh, kidney grill and stuff. But this definitely feels uh, just more. I don't know how this how I would say it. This I like the hybrid system definitely. Uh, it's more present here, of course, but it uh, this really just does feel very safe. Pulling it pretty hard, it feels very safe. Even though it's very cold out, it's 41 degrees, I'm not gonna do anything stupid with this car or you know, try and drift it around a corner, but it, um, with 225 tires, it actually feels very safe. I feel like I have good control over this. As for visibility in here, it's actually great out the front. Uh, it's a, not really a thick A-pillar, it just protrudes a little bit more than average, but it's uh, pretty wide mirrors uh in here so it's good for mirrors and very wide easy windows to see out of in the rear it's a little bit worse than i was expecting um but it's still pretty good for a convertible it has a moderately long uh glass back there so it it's not too bad and blind spot monitoring of course helps lean departure warning it has a lot of good safety features yeah the brakes are a little gravy when you're at low speed so as you saw i just like jerked to a stop trying to tap it a little bit but that's okay for the material choice in here, it's great. It's a good variation, but it is, is a, I think new these were about $62,000, $65,000. Uh, now it's a bit less than that, but it is um very, very nice uh, value proposition for a great daily because I drove the M4, but the M4 of course is crazy expensive. But uh, this one's a lot less expensive, but it still retains a very good powertrain. And it's a very nice package inside and out. Sounds good too. And stomping on it, it really does uh, pull very hard. It just jumps right up to uh, high RPMs. It really doesn't uh, leave its gear for a long time, which is good. It's a very nice transmission. This is very smooth shifting. And uh, yeah, even though, of course, you can feel the gear changes and like the drop, this is almost effortless. It really does not have any hard shifts or, or jerks to it. This drives very smooth, even in sport mode, which I've been in. Now let's go back into comfort mode and just uh, see it'll bog down the uh, RPMs a little bit back to like, uh, I don't know, very well. Wow, like 800, 900 RPM. This has a very good uh, good fuel economy management system because uh, I think it gets 22, 31, 25 for MPG, as I stated. And um, that's actually very good for this power, 382 horsepower. That's great. Yeah, it's very easy to cruise in, but this is very playful when it needs to be. It has very good handling. Like if I'm even in comfort mode here when I'm like uh, touching the wheel, it's not like unbearable, but it is very... Uh, very tight, tight steering, which I like. And the uh, automatic seatbelt tensioner, I, I almost think it's a little too aggressive here. I currently have it very tight against me, very tight, but, um, and I can't really adjust that, but it is, um, it's for safety, of course, if you're gonna be driving, driving this hard. But even if I go into Eco Pro mode, uh, where it's really focused on economy, it still keeps the seatbelt really tight tensioned. I don't really like it that much. I would prefer if it just had a bit of a looser tensioning system, unless, like, depending on drive mode, I wish it would tighten up. But driving back in comfort mode, it's very, very good, very easy. As for the suspension feel, it drives very well going through bumps, surprisingly. It's not that, that uh, like, you know, just terrible to drive in the day-to-day. -day. I'm driving on a road. You can't usually get the most out of these cars anyway. They're very powerful, but they, uh, they're, you know, attractive to a normal buyer and they, uh, they really do well. 
Let's go back into sport, just test out the paddles a little more. Wow, very good response from those paddles. Not lightning quick, but it, it's very, very good. There's not like big uh, gaps in certain, like in certain cars I've driven in the past. Like in the uh, in the Ford Mustang uh, GT that I drove a 2022, there was a bit of a gap between different gears. It wasn't a very even shift when I was going between the uh, paddle shifters. Like going down from like three to two to one, there were different uh, big jumps between those gears. Whereas in this, it's pretty stable throughout most of the uh, the gear range all the way from eight to at least two is where I tested. And it's uh, pretty even uh, blips between those, which is good. And also when you're in sport mode here, I'll go back into comfort, but when you're in sport mode here, uh, you can actually get some uh, pops and crackles for just a little bit of this uh, exhaust. So that's pretty cool coming stock, having that. Not being overbearing though, because in the Toyota Supra with the B58 engine, uh, it was a bit overbearing. I think people complain that it did too often and too easily. So uh, they toned it down a little bit for here in the BMW, but I think it's well balanced. But the brakes are pretty manageable. They're not overly touchy. I can drive it pretty easily, having just gotten out of my normal daily driver car. And um, yeah, sounds really good, drives really well. Uh, I don't know, some minor minor letdowns of this car. I would say, uh, I would say the tire noise is a, more of a letdown. The wind noise is actually very, very good, but the uh, the tire noise going down this rougher road, it, it gets louder once you're going about 50 miles per hour. It definitely gets not, nothing crazy. It's acceptable, but it, it just gets a little bit louder than uh, than I'd prefer. Wind noise stays very well uh, composed though throughout the, throughout the drive range here. I love this digital uh, gauge cluster they did in here. They have a, a full navigation system in the center now. Of course, you can configure different options in there, but it drives uh, very well with that. It's very well in tune with the, uh, you know, having your standard Apple CarPlay, uh, I think eight or 10 inch in, uh, infotainment system with BMW's iDrive. It's very nice there. It does also have these things. Uh, so if you're driving with the top down, uh, over on the, uh, the headrest over here, it has some buttons here on each side with three different heating levels. That's actually uh, to heat the back of your neck if you drive with the top down in cold weather. So they were thinking that a lot of people understandably do uh, use convertibles in the winter, but they, um, yeah, they aren't often able to drive them if it's too cold because of the, uh, you know, just the obvious fact that it's so cold, your neck is going to get destroyed. But they actually added some uh, little heating vents inside of there. Easily accessible too, with uh, three different levels, just as easily as your uh, heated seats in here. So that's a very, very nice setup. I really like that. This steering wheel too is just so driver focused. I love it. It's gigantic. The 10 and 2, uh, what do you call it? Um, the 10 and 2 bolsters are just gigantic. And uh, it's very nice. It's leather wrapped. It's pretty supple. It's similar to a lot of BMW wheels, but that's a very good thing because BMW makes very meaty wheels for nearly all of their models. And uh, I think they really benefit well from it. And then these paddles, they are plastic, but they, uh, they're they large and they feel pretty good. They have some rubber on the back. They uh, they feel substantial enough, even though they aren't like big metal ones that have like maybe a Maserati. Like they're, they're very, very good and very easy to use. Cruising here in Eco Pro mode. This does uh, quiet down quite a bit because uh, it does have active exhaust uh, valves in the rear exhaust. It's a dual tip system and it is uh, pretty well composed. And it's pretty well diluted inside of uh, Eco Pro mode. It's very quiet and easy to drive. And uh, of course it's going to be. And it, um, yeah, they do a good job with it. It's not gimmicky. Uh, a lot of people with active exhaust, if they've never had it before, they just think that, uh, you know, it's not worth it. It's just something that they do as like a marketing scheme. But no, this one's very well done. Uh, there are multiple that are well done. Some early iterations weren't always so, you know, so worthwhile, but I think this one is. I think it does a good job quieting down and also being loud and playful when it needs to be in sport mode and sport plus. Then for the rest of your center console here, it's actually a lot of hard buttons, which is good. Hard uh, volume knob, hard seat knob, hard uh, climate controls, heated seats, but it takes advantage of all the benefits of iDrive as well. So it, it's a very nice balance inside of there, um, but not, not so bad like uh, having to seek through your entire infotainment system for very simple tasks. They have a nice balance. They put a lot of uh, hard buttons while keeping it a nice minimal interior with uh, a very good set of uh, design choices in here. They're very varied 
there are many varied materials in here so it does have uh, like a shark tooth design for the center console and, and such and then running along uh, some different parts of the vehicle it's very nice and then uh leather and soft touch most places are uh, present with accent stitching and then you have this nice brown color interior i think it looks very nice in my opinion and uh yeah and then being a convertible, your uh, your simple convertible uh, setting is right there to open and close, like so, whenever you're sitting still. And I've operated it a couple times. It's very quick. It's probably only about 12 to 15 seconds total operation. Up or down, it's not that bad at all. So that's very welcome because, uh, you know, some convertibles of past have just taken so darn long to uh, get set up, open or close for the roof. But it really, uh, really is quick in here. I'm in eco pro mode here, but... The engine feels very torquey down low. Even in Eco Pro, it gets out of its own way very well, but it is, um, it's definitely uh, a little bit slower to reply. Nothing too bad in Eco Pro. Um, it's just not, you know, as like get up and go. It's not gonna like skip a few gears right away, but they tuned it accurately, I think. And then going back into comfort, you hear definitely a big re-entry of uh, some engine noise and some pumped in. And then for sport, gets even louder. And the RPMs jump, of course, so it sounds very good there. And it does have a pretty good lane departure alert uh, system because it vibrates the wheel and starts to correct you whether you really like it or not initially. It's been accurate to date. I've been trying to shift over the uh, line just a little bit to test it, and I think it does well. And going through that turn right there, I actually didn't lose it whatsoever. I'm in sport mode. I have traction on, but I uh, I did not lose that. I did not spin. I did not slide. It's 41 degrees, and I just held traction very well there through that pretty tight uh, corner. So that's actually very impressive. With 225 tires, they did a very good job with the handling of this. Uh, BMW, of course, is great at handling usually. So they, uh, yeah, I definitely like this, uh, this setup right here. It makes the most of a moderately entry-level type of... Uh, M car like I know it, it's placed as that anyway but th this really handles in a lot of characteristics this handles in a lot of ways very very well just like an M car and in just a moment we will just get this out on the highway do a little bit of a highway test and then we will wrap up the review alrighty and let's take this out on the highway So we are in sport mode. Feels great going through these corners. I'm not pushing it hard, but wow, this thing retains such good traction. This is crazy with 225s. Yeah, we have a nice clear lane, awesome. Yeah, so it really stays very quiet actually for wind noise, uh, up, even up above 65. I'm only gonna go about 65, but it feels great. Sounds great too, but the, um, yeah, tire noise is a little bit more pronounced up top, but up above 60, but it's still pretty quiet. It's only on rough roads that the tire noise does get a bit excessive, but overall it's really good. I'm very impressed by how well this just handles overall. Like, this isn't an, a full-on M4, but this thing retains amazing traction, even with 225s, but it's really tossable and throwable. And it, it's a rear-wheel drive, of course, so it's uh, very, very fun. And then, um, it has a little bit of pumped-in engine noise, but it has great power, good drivetrain, transmission is awesome. Uh, driving very casually, driving very hard. Any of those ways, it drives very, very smoothly in the shifting, and you almost don't feel it. But it does it very quickly still. I think it's a great matchup of really almost all parts of this car. Alrighty, as for my final thoughts on this BMW M440i from 2021, I think it is a really impressive uh, sports car, but also an amazing daily. This drives pretty uh, well composed when you want it to, but it's very tossable. You can throw it easily. Uh, it's rear wheel drive, so you can easily get the back to step out, but it retains such amazing traction with 225 wide tires. I'm very impressed and the brakes are great. Uh, I think this is a really great car and it's not the full on M4 and it doesn't carry that price tag either. So I, I actually, I love this thing. This is one of my favorite cars I've driven to date, just on a handling basis. Overall, in all situations, this has amazing handling, and I'm very impressed with it. And the interior is very good, it has tech, uh, definitely lots of good tech, and it is, uh, 
It's very attractive outside, but it's still a little bit subdued. It's not too crazy. And the new kidney grill design, I didn't like it at first. It's growing on me. It's not my favorite yet, but it's uh, it does uh, set it apart from the older BMW models. And just for a minor gripe, the tire noise can be a bit loud on rough roads, but wind noise is very well subdued, and I very much enjoy driving this thing. Alrighty, thank you very much again to Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island, for allowing me to both review and test drive this BMW. For a more in-depth review, make sure to check out the channel. As always, drive with passion. Thank you very much for watching, and take care.